This program is brought to you in part by The Rediverse, Patreon, and kick-ass viewers like you hitting that subscribe button. We're steadily climbing, so hit that subscribe button, hang out, have some goofs and some gaffs, and enjoy your time here. And seriously, thank you. So, Netflix is bringing back the Avatar franchise in a major way. And no, not that Avatar, the actual good Avatar. And I have a serious confession to make. I have never watched the Avatar The Last Airbender movie. And I know, I know, shocker. Me not wanting to watch a movie that's universally hated, primarily because of this guy. Being a big Avatar fan myself, I skipped it all together because, well, we can all agree, there's enough pain in the world to not add this to my psyche. But who knows, maybe it's not going to be as bad as everyone says. The majority isn't always right, just to be fair. You have to really ask yourself, what makes a movie bad? Is it bad acting? Is it a bad script? terrible camera shots, or a stupid story, or does it involve all the nations of garbage living together in harmony? Oh yeah, this this was the same time Dragon Ball Evolution came out, so yeah, I'm sure that means that this movie is going to be fantastic and leave its mark on all of humanity for decades to come? But whatever, I'm doing it, full throttle, because why not? I mean, it would be fun at least to laugh at this movie, at the very least, but who knows? Maybe it's not as bad as everyone says. I'm just, uh, you know, I I'm going to give this hated movie its fair shake and let's see how it pans out. Oh boy. So first we start off with the iconic opening after the Windows Movie Maker title screen. Oh, actually looks pretty good. And then we get a title crawl. And if Star Wars hasn't taught me anything else, do not trust title crawls. I think I got a pit in my stomach. We open up to Katara narration. Then Katara starts water bending, and it's fine. I can I can forgive this. It's just a ball of water. Although the the special effects are, I mean, yeah, it was 2010, but uh, it could have been a little better than this. Sokka, who is trying to break the ice, and no, that's not a euphemism, which is kind of weird because they end up running away from the ice being broken, but you purposefully try to break the ice while you're on it. Uh, that that seems about right. Then, just like in the show, they eventually find Aang. Is it okay if you tell me your name? The monks named me Ang. They find Aang. The monks named me Ang. Fuck you, movie. Then the Fire Nation shows up, and it's one of the most non-threatening invasions I've ever seen in my life. Like, I feel no threat from these soldiers whatsoever. It, it feels like I'm just watching a high school play the way that they shuffle around. Don't disobey us, or you'll get a stern talking to. Then they eventually take the monks named me Ang back to Zuko's ship. Then we get exposition granny. I feel like we're going to get a lot of this in the movie. Zuko, by the way, for those that don't know it, is a prince text with bringing back the Avatar to the Fire Nation to restore his- <laughs> We then are introduced to one of the best characters in the entire show, Uncle Iroh. My name is Iroh. Please stop. Don't don't ever say that again. My name is Iroh. After being taken here, the monks named me Ang. Uh, proceeds to run away. Then Zuko says, Don't move! I have nowhere to run! And it's like, what? He literally whipped out his glider. Do you think he's going to run away right now? They, of course, managed to escape. Aang, Katara, and boring Sokka. Yes, yeah, Sokka's very boring, by the way. They make it to the Air Temple, where Aang grew up at. The monks named me Ang. Aang, unfortunately, sees a bunch of his dead people, and well... No. Then we get back to Zuko, who was played by Slumdog Millionaire, if anyone happens to remember that movie. And he's being berated by General Zhao, played by Asif Manvi, who's... Honestly, generally pretty funny. Anyway, Slumdog Zuko gets extremely salty as a result, and he, he leaves out to beat up some underlings to blow off some steam. Then the movie pans to Team Avatar. They get arrested by Fire Nation soldiers. He's handcuffed, but then uncancuffed after they get to the Earthbender concentration camp that's widely open, and they have access to the Earth that they need to hold. Hold. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. So you're telling me you have a fucking free roaming concentration camp. How is this how is this a thing? In the show they were put in a metal concentration camp where they cannot use their bending at all. But here is just a wide fucking open area. And it's like putting someone in jail with an entire army, some AKs, some tomahawks, some nukes if you're if you've studied hard enough. The fact that this is an open area is and everybody's unshackled is just stupid all around. It's stupid for the fire soldiers because, again, tomahawks, ground, 
earthbenders and it's stupid for the earthbenders because they don't use it. The Fire Nation in this movie needs actual fire lit so they can actually bend it. The earth is like right underneath their feet. This is, this is, this is enraging. The monks named me Ong. Then there's this weird ass shot of Katara awkwardly pushing a security guard. It's so weird. She's running, she's running in from like 12 miles away towards the security guard and he just lets her push him. It's so, it's so weird. Ugh, these lines, the script. Why does Shyamalan have these people doing tribal dances to bend anything? None of it's fluid in any way, shape or form. What the fuck is this? All the earthbenders, wait, all these earthbenders just to move one rock. Ah, oh, this hurts. This, this is actually painful. Am I missing something where you need multiple earthbenders to move one rock? My pain is still far greater than you! After Aang has motivated people enough to actually use the ground beneath them because I don't know, they're earthbenders, they win because the Fire Nation troops are basically stormtroopers cosplaying as Sekiro soldiers. And then more weird transitions. There's a lot of weird transitions in this movie, by the way. There is a weird transition in the beginning, but I let it slide. If you've never seen Avatar, you can't follow what the fuck is going on. And because it's garbage, we cut to the Fire Nation where Zhao is briefing the Fire Lord. Remember where the Fire Lord was this unknown mystery entity in the actual animated show? Yeah, they show him right away here. He looks like someone's well-meaning dad. Are you an insane? Also, why the fuck do they keep walking down the hallway then stopping multiple times? Like, look at this. Even in fiction, people don't do these things. This is stupid. Get to the end of the fucking hallway. <sighs> okay. The monks named me Ong. After Zuko gets shamed, we cut to him demanding some poor kid to do an exposition dump. Yeah, I, I figured it was coming. It's so unnatural. Like, what if this kid had no idea what the hell was going on or just moved here from another part of the Fire Nation or something or wasn't taught how much of a dick Fire Lord Ozai is? What if he just didn't know it? Then he would have to give the, the exposition itself, which... I don't think he minds. It, it, the more exposition, the better. Then we cut to Aang having a mental crisis and undirected Katara and Boring Sokka wake up literally at the same time on cue. It's as almost as if the director said that they should just pop up. This is not how people, this is not how people actually react. This looks so fake. They literally just pop up like the Undertaker. They respectfully give Aang his space and Aang visits the temple and then he gets captured apparently by a person waiting on him to come back to the temple so he could betray him? Except Aang was in ice. How the fuck do you know he's going to be here right now? Like, I, I am so lost. The monks named me Aang. Aang gets captured because, you know, sometimes Aang can win and sometimes Aang can't. I, I don't follow it either. And then after Aang gets captured by General Zhao, Zuko dons his blue spirit mask, which is, well, it was honestly one of my favorite things from the Avatar show. And he rescues Aang from the clutches of General Zhao because he wants that honor for himself so he can get redeemed by his father. Then we get to the general fight scene, which is, it's sometimes good, and then most of the time it's sucky. They barely, well, quote unquote, barely, escape from General Zhao, and Zhao seems to have figured out who the blue spirit is. He then debriefs Fire Lord Ozai, stating he thinks he knows who the blue spirit is. Then later on, who knows how later on, Zhao tries to assassinate Zuko by having a gas man leak, which, wait a minute, again, hold up. Let's put a fire source, a fire source next to a gas main. Who's the dumbass that designed the ship? Team Avatar eventually makes it to the Northern Water Tribe, which was where they were trying to go to in the first place so Aang could learn all the bending techniques, starting with water as it's the next element that he has to learn before he can master all four elements. Here, everyone, or at least the, the people in the audience, they finally get to meet Dickhead Princess, which, if that sounds gross to you, Wait till you see what's coming next. Exactly. And between Sokka and Princess Yue, or we'll call her Princess D at this point, there's like zero chemistry, which to no one's surprise, the Twatter tribe. Wait, <clears throat> did I say Twatter? Well, actually, you know what? I'm leaving that in. It's accurate. They're twats. They get ready and hype themselves up for the coming invasion. They get prepared. There's a little um, back and forth between the master that Aang is supposed to be learning water bending from. It's pretty garbage, just as you would expect. Hmm. Also, another thing that I've noticed in this movie, white people good, brown people bad. Next meme. Aang goes into sleep mode to connect with the spirit world and Katara is left to defend him. And as Zuko is on his way to capture the avatar yet again, 
when he finally makes it to her, it's so, it's such a pathetic fight. It's like she purposefully let herself get knocked out. She literally focused on one of the fire blasts that Zuko fires at her, when you can obviously see that both are happening. Plain as day, you see the fire attack coming, and it's like she purposefully ignores it and gets knocked out. It, she, she didn't want to help anyways. The monks named me Ong. The invasion starts and the fodder starts fighting. You know how it goes. It's the, the nameless soldiers, and you've got a host of weird shots, weird bending, weird acting. It's just... This movie is aggressively bad and boring. Zuko goes after Aang and they do some Scooby-Doo bullshit, cause of course, which would have been fine, but if it wasn't so close to the end of the movie, but nope, time to split up and look for clues. Katara, after getting pathetically knocked out, catches up and freezes Zuko in place. He's, he's dead now actually, but not dead because Aang helps him out. And I think this, this couple of seconds was probably one of the best moments for this version of Aang because it actually it actually peered out like the genuine Aang from the show just for a split second. We then see Zhao and Iroh making it to the moon spirit so they can kill the spirit and remove the water bending powers that they barely use in the first place. So uh, yeah, as they finally made it to the moon spirits, Zhao bags one of the fish and then shanks it prison yard style. Pretty gruesome. The one part I liked a bit here was a pissed off Iroh. Iroh who has been against killing the moon spirit because that would upset the balance from the get go at least on this. Iroh in any form of media pissed off is automatically a badass. It can even, even if it's just for a few seconds, it, it overcomes the bullshit movie. Then Sokka and Princess D make it back. She does the expected sacrifice if you've seen the show to save the moon spirit and restore balance. She falls. Sokka poorly acts like he's broken up over PP head. They bring the moon back and waterbenders fight the same way as a normal person. It literally did not matter. Zuko, Hiro, and Zhao, they all begin to escape separately. And then, it's the weirdest thing, four random, <laughs> four random benders fucking out of nowhere, like the boys, they come in and they're, they're the water tribe elites here and they just, they just end Zhao. They, they just kill him. They casually murder them. They're fucking goons. Like, why, why aren't they taking on the entire Fire Nation army? They could end them easily. I apologize, guys, but every time I play Tekken, this fucking punk ass bitch, worthless ass lowlife, do stream snipes me every time. But they just take off. Aang does some ballet fighting with some weird ass close up zoom ins and some shots. It's just, ah. What do you, do you expect anything better at this point? Then he begins to bend the ocean to defeat the Fire Nation, just like in the show. After this insane battle, everyone is overcome with emotions after such a battle. Like, look at these emotions. I, I hate this movie. Why the fuck does the Avatar at the very end scene look so fucking weird and off-putting? I mean, I get he's supposed to be unsure of his role as a leader, but it's just, it's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> they thought they were going to get a sequel. And that's it. That, that's the that's the Avatar of the Last Airbender movie. <sighs> Shyamalan. This is literal agony. Sokka, even with the animation aside, is more alive and has personality in the animated show. This Sokka's parents kept him exclusively at a private school and he developed zero personality. It's just, uh, I hate this Sokka so much. There's nothing engaging about this movie. There's so many things wrong with it. There's zero tension. The narration got annoying, like, immediately. Why would you break the ice and then be scared and surprised that the ice is breaking? And, of course, like I said, the movie maker at Star Wars intro, that's terrible. Katara and Sokka been so generic. Neither of them do anything the whole time. They always look confused. Then you had Exposition Granny, Exposition Kid, just random exposition and I hate it. And the fucking Audio Jungle soundtrack is terrible with the sound effects from the same place. Asa Manvi, as much as I like him as a person, he's a dog shit villain. Slumdog Zuko is bad. Like how did the, the old guy waiting for Aang knew he was going to be at the temple? Like that's just nonsense. This movie is boring and stupid. The bad green screen saying the avatar. Yes, I know it's supposed to be pronunciated that way, but it's still painful. They had a piss poor backstory for all, pretty much all the characters and the child, uh, child actors is a gamble. They're not always going to be good, but they're not always going to be bad. Then you've got blurred backgrounds for bad special effects, more powerful, ang, easy to capture. That's just weird. Guitar is stupid. I know I've already said it, but I just have to say it over and over. Benders don't even bend. They just straight up use karate. Like there's too much karate 
for one bending move. It's just too much. It's like casting a spell in Final Fantasy. It feels like this movie is primarily just cheap name recognition. It's disgusting. Like the drill heads were just stupid. I forgot to mention that. Two seconds of Princess Yue is, and well, time for her to die now. It's really frustrating. This movie could have been so, so good. There was a budget of $150 million for this movie. And this is what you came up with. This is what you limped to the barn with. It's, uh, I'm so glad this movie never got to Toph. Protect my girl. They shattered Uncle Iroh though. It's, it's not Iro. God, everything about this movie. Fucking Witcher 2 Sokka. This is one of the worst movies I have ever seen in my entire life, made from one of the best shows I've ever seen in my entire life. It's wild. I came into this with low expectations in all honesty, but holy hell. This makes a dumpster fire like the Minions franchise look like it's Enter the Spider-Verse, which, all right, I, I actually probably went too far on that. Minions is one of the worst things to happen to humanity. This movie has dementia. You know when somebody tries to remember a long story about something that happened to them, but they can barely recall it? That's this movie, and I hate it. Never do this again, Nickelodeon. Don't ever do this again. The monks named me Ong. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of this video. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, You know, the usual usuals. Tell me what you think down below. You always know I'm in the comment section. I'll see you all later. I need a breather. God, it's fucking awful. Shut up.